Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Zoomtopia Live. I'm Ronnie Brandt, and I'm joined with Sheila McGee-Smith here. You know, Sheila, would you like to introduce yourself and tell everyone at home what um, you're up to and why you're here at Zoomtopia today? Absolutely. So I am an industry analyst. I've been covering the contact center space full-time since 1990. All right. It's, it's interesting to think of Zoom as one of the most recent entrants into a market, but I've been watching for that for so long. So it's an exciting change. But I'm here to learn how much um, has progressed in terms of the, the context that a solution from Zoom announced in March of 22, right? Not that long ago, 18 months ago. So here to learn more about it. And, and I've been at Zoom about a year now or so, and before I've also been in like the CRM space and customer service space as well. And to see 600 plus features in 18 months go to a robust CX suite, it's super exciting. So I'm wondering, what is it that you gained, at least from your day here at Syntopia, and what are some of the impressions that you want to share with the audience at home as well? So it's interesting. You know, both of us have been in this market for a while. Two years ago, we wouldn't have come to a conference where the theme was artificial intelligence, where everything was really presented in terms of artificial intelligence. And yet, it's the right answer because the world kind of changed. Mm -hmm. November of 22, when the New York Times and the Washington Post uh, sort of exploded the news of OpenAI and ChatGPT, and it became a consumer uh, thing. It became something that everybody it was on the you know everybody's lips. Students began using it, and you know people at work were started using it, and so there is an appetite, and that's the word. Uh, in fact, I was at a session earlier today, a contact center session about the next gen contact center, and a, a customer of Zoom was speaking, and he said, we have an appetite to add artificial intelligence to our operation. It's funny, one of the things that I have heard is CXOs, meaning CEOs and CIOs and CMOs, are giving objectives to the people who work for them to say, Find ways to incorporate generative AI into your business. Why? Because we think it'll help people work more effectively and perhaps we'll need less people to do the same amount of work. That's interesting. Uh, you mentioned something in there around generative AI and exploding because it's a consumer technology. And many times in the B2B space, those consumer technologies cross over and drive adoption and drive attractiveness for employers to attract uh, their employees to stay and keep them happy. So how do you see AI playing out as a way that it'll help employees get their job done, but also help employers reduce churn, in particular in the contact center? So there's, I look at three different areas where Gen AI is impacting contact center. The first is directly with consumers, right? And, and, customers calling in and needing help of a con contact center, right? And that first step is is automation. We've had chat bots. We've had text bots. They've been varying levels of good, right? And now we have a technology that easily makes it better, right? So let's give an example of how Gen AI makes a chat bot better, right? So if you had a chat bot set up to say, I want to buy something from 7-Eleven, right? Think about all the individual way, things that you would have to train that bot to know in terms of how many things you could potentially buy at a 7-Eleven and how easily it would to be to break it, right? Yeah. Like, I remember breaking a, a bot of somebody's by asking for a Pellegrino. Well, it knew sparkling water and it knew some other sparkling waters, but it didn't know Pellegrino. Well, ChatGPT or any sort of large language model, Gen AI model, allows you to do is get all of those intents, right? You don't have to sit there with a list mm -hmm. and, and figure out what every single one was. And that's where we were a year ago. I mean, it's pretty extraordinary. So now it's so much easier to generate a automated bot so they can be better, right? So you won't say something to a chat bot or a text bot that they don't understand as much as happened in the past. So that's straightforward sort of automation. How can we help chatbots and textbots be more effective? 
Next step is how do we help the agents be more effective? How do we help agents? And another, again, another example. One of the first applications that's become so prevalent uh, post Gen AI is summarization of interactions. So I, I know I have been on the phone with agents and often if it's the second or third time I'm calling about an issue, I'll stop and I'll say, let me give you a moment to read the notes. Mm-hmm. To find out now in this world where we can actually automatically do those summarizations, I've heard call center managers at very big brands say, we weren't doing summarization. We had no program for it. So when I was asking some poor agent to read the notes, there were no notes. And that's why we had that issue of everything being asked over and over and over again, right? It's one of the big drivers of dissatisfaction from the customer base. It's uh, one of the reasons that in some of the biggest industries, whether it is in telecommunications or in home services or even just repairs, why there's such dissatisfaction with the service. It's not because it's bad quality product. It's just frustration in some of the process for the customer. So when we think about that specific auto summarization, it's been announced here at, uh, at the show that that's going to be available now for contact center customers of Zoom Contact Center. So that's very exciting. But the other um, agent-facing kind of Gen AI that's also coming along is agent assist. Mm-hmm. So you didn't handle it in a chatbot. It's too complicated, right? There's no way a chatbot could understand it. You need a person, right? I, I remember I was, uh, I was on a call with, a, with an agent talking about something, mm-hmm. and I pivoted, right? I was talking about one thing, and then I pivoted to something else. And this agent wasn't able to pivot with me, right? Because they hadn't been trained on the second thing I decided I wanted to talk about. Think about AI expert now, an agent assist, being able to help that agent in the moment pivot, right? So that you don't have to stop and go find the information and you don't have to try and transfer the call. So we're helping, you you talked about how do we, improve agent satisfaction, right? How do we reduce churn? If you have a situation where an agent feels frustrated, where they they want to help, they want to help customers, right? And if we're constantly putting them in a position where they can't, they're going to be unhappy and they're going to leave, right? Mm-hmm. So a great example of how we're going to help agents get over some of that frustration by feeding them the information they need at the time that they need it. Okay. So customer-facing, agent-facing, and I think a lot about the back end of it, right? How Gen AI is helping develop applications faster. You talked about it. 600 features of Zoom Contact Center in 18 months. Mm -hmm. Some of that is driven by new tools for developing applications, Mm -hmm. right? But it also extends to how quickly can a customer deploy a generative AI application? How quickly can we do a chat bot or a text bot? We can do it faster now. Why? Because we can use better tools to do it. We don't have to sit there and write down every single intent and think of them. So three different areas. That is some really great insight, especially as um, our customers out there are thinking about how do I structure my call center? How do I help my agents help my customers? How do I help my supervisors help my agents? And you're speaking here at Zoomtopia. So you're about to go up onto your panel. I'm curious, like, what are some of the things you want to share with the audience and what are you going to talk about on it today? So the, the things that we're talking about in the panel, first of all, we have Amy Roberge with us, who is the head of solutions consulting for Contact Center here at Zoom. And she's a great resource. And so we're going to be talking about, you know, how do you incorporate Gen AI? What are some of the, the examples? Uh, in fact, I think you also interviewed Juanita Coley. And she's going to be on this panel as well. So we're looking forward to, you know, answering questions as much as anything else. But I think Juanita is really going to take it down the path of where does AI fit in workforce management and in quality management. So it's interesting. We've decided to take three different points of view with the three different panelists. I'm going to take the point of view of a CXO. What are we, what is a CXO looking for? Mm -hmm. And then Amy's going to take it from the perspective of the CIO. 
Right? What are they looking for? And Juanita is going to take it from the point of view of what is the operations manager in the contact center looking for? So we're going to hopefully give the different views so that, that no matter who you are in the audience, we'll be talking to you and what your concerns are. So as you think about what you're going to share, what is that intersection? Like, what's that point that companies should be shooting for so that all of these different personas and all these people involved in literally taking care of your customer, the most important part of your business, comes to fruition? So it's interesting. The Zoom platform actually becomes part of the answer, right? So think about how many different little AI companies have sprung up all over the place. So I'm a company and I want to start incorporating things into my contact center, and I don't know how to choose an AI vendor. Based on what's been announced here at Zoomtopia, you're in a position to say, I've already chosen Zoom. They are really helping me by incorporating it into the platform I've already chosen. And so they're making it easy for me to extend into AI with my chosen product. And so I think that's one great way for, for, uh, for businesses to think about AI to think about who their trusted vendors are and having them help them in this process. And one last question for you. We've talked a lot about AI, and I love your framework of how the different places that AI will play, the different uh, modalities of customer service. As you look over the next 12 months, maybe it's 24 months, maybe it's longer, right? But how? what are some of the common use cases or things that you think are gonna start popping up? They're gonna ultimately help these agents and supervisors to be even more successful? I'm gonna just pick two, and that's summarization, right? And it helps not just the consumer, because the agent knows better, but any time an agent is transferring uh, information or summarizing what happened in a chat bot or a text bot and sending that to the agent, think about how, how much smoother things are going to be. So I think we were already seeing great adoption of summarization. Zoom has seen it first in meetings. I mean, extraordinary ramp. Um, the fact that it's being offered at no additional cost to companies who have contact center agent licenses, it's, you're making it easy for people to trial it and to incorporate it because it's not a purchase decision, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then the other one is agent assist. And one of the reasons it has, it's been around for about five years, right? So Google contact center AI is one of the companies um, that had it, you know, announced it, you know, before there was large language models, really well known. And people didn't do agent assist because where do we get the answers to give the agents? Mm -hmm. Okay, we know they need agent uh, answers. Where do we get the And now large language models help us develop that corpus, right? Help us to ask a question of some area of, of, of knowledge knowledge management, wikis, whatever it is, we have that, that place. And now we have a way to ask the question and, and seed it to the agent. So it makes it much easier. So I think those are the two, auto summarization and agent assist. Uh, that's wonderful. Sheila, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for watching at home. Again, I'm Ronnie Brandt. This is Sheila, and we're coming here live from Zoomtopia. We'll see you next time. Thanks.